Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, ingredients, formulations, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is your number on the bright side. And we want to hear from you, especially if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We've got blog stories and news stories and videos, all kinds of good health information, as well as all the Longevity products. You can purchase them right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866 735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. If you want to start a longevity business, if you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneurial lifestyle, if you want to make your own hours, work out of the home, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business, if you're health-minded yourself or if nutritional supplementation has helped you or if the longevity products have helped you, why not help spread the word and make a little bit of money at the same time? Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, as well as the longevity products and the longevity systems. Call 866-735-2470. They can give you all the information, or you can sign up right off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business. Just sign up at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Also, we want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with dark spots or acne blemishes, if you're looking for an anti-aging product, Retinol is your go-to over-the-counter anti-aging, anti-wrinkle product. It's also wonderful for treating acne blemishes. Just as a, a, a general skin conditioner, if you know about the power of exfoliation and the power of peels, then you want to use Retinol. Retin and not just any Retinol, you want a good old dose of Retinol, and that's what our Truth Retinol 5% Gel will get you, not just Retinol, but also vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, silicon, oil, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. On our last program, we were talking about eating and excitotoxins and the link between our health and the manipulation, the chemical manipulation of our food supply, as well as the manipulation of our drives, the manipulation of our drives to eat those tweaked, chemically tweaked foods. Obviously, eating is something we all have to do. We all have to, we have to survive, and we got to ingest nutrition to survive. But at the same time, ironically, our eating behaviors are not only a source of survival, they're also a source of the vast majority of our health misery. And I don't know any other way to say that. I know it's not politically correct. I know you can't beat people up for eating, and it's just, you know, 
you got to be polite, and I understand that, and I don't mean to be being spirited here, but the vast majority of us have an eating disorder, and that includes me. We eat too much. We eat unintelligently. We eat reflexively. We eat to soothe our nerves. We eat to improve our moods. We eat to give us pleasure rather than to nourish our bodies. And this is a misuse of food, and it's a, pro- a product of our disconnection from our body's natural wisdom. It's a product of our civilization. We can see this phenomenon in our domesticated pets. Lions and wolves don't eat because they're depressed, but cats and dogs do. Cats and dogs eat when they're under stress. Wild animals don't do that. We're encouraged to eat everywhere we look. You drive down the road, you see the billboards, you turn on the TV and the radio, you hear the advertisements. Everywhere you look, there are messages to eat. And the price we pay for this food abuse is illness. It's not what we want to hear. And I'm not preaching as I have my own eating disorders. I'm fully aware of them. But it has to be acknowledged if we're sick and we want to get better. It has to be said if we are serious about our health. If we're serious about reversing illness and disease, if we're serious about our longevity, we have to acknowledge our misuse and abuse of food as the root of most, if not all, all of our long-term chronic degenerative health diseases, health challenges. To put it simply, understanding how to eat strategically is the key to healthy living, at least from a physical perspective. Certainly there's the psychological perspective and the mental and the emotional and the spiritual dimensions of health, and I don't want to marginalize those, but from a physical perspective, understanding how to eat intelligently, strategically, is the key to healthy living. It's the key to reversing disease. The body is a closed system. With the exception of two portals, there's only two ways to get into the body to disturb its pristine and perfect biochemistry. The only two portals in the system, the only two holes in this closed system, are what we breathe in through our nostrils and what we ingest in through our mouths. And that makes what we breathe and what we eat of paramount importance and deserving of great awareness and respect. Now, as important as what we breathe into our nostrils, into our lungs is, it's nowhere as complex as the stuff that we eat. There's not a lot of things in the air that we breathe, although these days there's a lot more things than there used to be, but it's still not as complex as what we're eating. Food represents the input of a complicated blend of chemicals that today is made up of hundreds, perhaps thousands of different chemical structures and combinations, many of which made their appearance only in the last couple of hundred years. This is a mere blip in evolutionary terms, and the body has simply not had enough time to adjust and develop the mechanisms required to process these chemical combinations and the large amounts of them. In many ways, our health problems are eating problems, and our eating problems are energy problems. The brain loves high-energy foods, which for hundreds of thousands of years was not a problem for two reasons. Number one, there weren't a lot of high-energy foods that were readily available. We had to work to get food. We had to work hard, sometimes to the point of injury and sometimes to the point even of death, to obtain them. To try to get the meat off a woolly mammoth was no small task for our primitive ancestors. It was a lot of work to go get food. And it was really kind of a nonstop search. So there weren't a lot of high-energy foods available. Today, we've got high-energy foods every 20 feet. There's a vending machine. Every 20 yards, there's a 7-Eleven or a McDonald's, or a Burger King. It's everywhere. This is a situation that the body is just not used to from an evolutionary perspective. Number two, foods that had high energy in them back in the day also had the vitamins and the minerals, the micronutrients that the body required to process that high energy. And that is the role of the micronutrients. That is the role of the vitamins and the minerals. The vitamins and minerals function to allow the body to use the energy that's found in the protein and the fats and the carbohydrates. Those are the two aspects of nutrition. You got your proteins, your fats, your carbs, and then you got your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals. And the job of the micronutrients, the vitamins and the minerals, is to help the body use the macronutrients. Back in the day, they came together. Natural foods have all of these things together. So what ends up happening is we get lots of the energy, but not the nutrients that help the body process energy. And by the way, our fat, or our body fat, represents the body's way of restabilizing itself after all that energy. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Lifetime Okay, we are back on the break. 
right side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're trying to lose weight and you can't seem to do it, if you have a long-term chronic health challenge you need help with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised on the program, Head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well, or you can call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470, the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can order products uh, by talking to somebody in person. If you have questions about the products, they can help you there too as well, 866 735 2470 is the phone number. Okay, so the brain loves high energy foods. For thousands of years, that wasn't really a problem. There weren't a lot of high energy foods available, and the foods that were available had a lot of, ha, had the micronutrients in them that helped the body process the macronutrients. Today, that doesn't happen. That's what a processed food is. A processed food is a food that has lots of the energy. The part of the food that activates the brain's pleasure chemistry without the micronutrients that are required. You might ask, why are the micronutrients extracted or removed from the macronutrients in a processed food? And the answer is, is because when you take the micronutrients out of the food, the bugs won't eat the food. Taking the micronutrients out of the food helps preserve the food and helps keep the food, uh, it helps improve the shelf life of the food. That's why they extract the high energy from the micronutrients. It's not for us, it's so they can sell more product. Oh, yeah, they'll throw a few smatterings of nutrients in there, but the whole food contains just the right amount of micronutrients that the body needs to process the macronutrients. The body and the brain crave high energy because energy facilitates survival, but without those micronutrients, that energy is not useful. That energy doesn't do anything for us. That energy doesn't give the body what it needs. So what it needs. So we keep going for more and more energy because we're not making use out of the energy we're getting. The nutrition word, by the way, for energy is calories. So we get lots of calories, but we can't use those calories. And those calories and that energy has a destabilizing effect on the body. So the body has to restabilize itself by stashing those calories away. Calories and energy have a destabilizing effect, especially if there's no micronutrients to use those calories. So the body will stash those calories away. It will stash those ener that energy away. And that's what we call our body fat. And on top of all of that, because pleasure is linked to energy ingestion or calorie ingestion, we have an added incentive to go for energy and calories. So we go for the energy, we go for the calories because we're not being able to use them. So the body sends out these signals to go out and get some more calories. And on top of all that, because pleasure is connected to the ingestion of energy, every time we eat a candy bar or every time we eat some kind of high energy food, we get a surge of pleasure chemical pleasure brain chemistry. Over the last 200 years, food processors have figured out that they can make billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, if they can produce high energy foods cheaply and then sell them. They figured out how to compress the energy and how to make food super high energy artificially. Even better, they figured out what chemicals can trick the brain into thinking it's about to get high energy foods. And the net result is the body keeps inputting energy in a way that it's not equipped to handle. And that much energy destabilizes the body. It has a destabilizing effect that the body now has to use resources in order to deal with the very resources that are supposed to be in those high energy foods that we're not getting. So it's a one-two punch. These high energy foods cost us nutrients because the body now has to figure out a way to process all that energy. And the foods that we're eating are devoid of the very nutrients we need to process them. And that, my friends, is a big, big problem. It is the big problem. It is the ultimate problem when it comes to our health or the lack thereof, when it comes to the disastrous state of our health as a culture, as a country, and as, uh, as citizens of the world. Because this is not a problem that's uh, isolated to this country. This is a problem that is all over the Western world, all over the world, not just the Western world, all over the world. And what's the solution? It's simple. It's easy. Actually, it's simple, but it's not so easy. It's simple because it doesn't take much brain power to do it. It's not 
easy because our brain is not wired to go that way, and it's called calorie restriction. That is the solution to the problem, calorie restriction. The ultimate health strategy for everyone, and this flies in the face of the messaging that we are bombarded with every minute of every day, restricting our calories. It's simple, but it's not easy. In order to do it, in order to leverage it, in order to take advantage of the power of calorie restriction, we've got to understand what exactly is happening and why we can't stop eating. For thousands of years, the scarce situation, uh, uh, energy scarce situation that we had to deal with, thousands of years of scarcity, has caused us to seek out calories, has led us down the evolutionary path of searching for calories, and on top of that, to associate pleasure from a biochemistry perspective when we eat those calories. Biochemicals of pleasure, brain chemicals that cause us to feel pleasure are lead us to ingestion or endless ingestion of calories. To stop this endless drive for calories and energy and food, we need to understand that we're eating to satisfy our energy requirements and to access pleasure chemistry that's switched on when we get, those, uh, get that energy, get those calories. And then we need to be taking countermeasures. Using micronutrients is one of the most important countermeasures we can do. Using micronutrients to help the body access that energy so we don't need to be ingesting as many calories to get energizing. energized. Use your BTT with your meals. Use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with your meals. Supplement with micronutrients with your meals. It'll help your body access the energy that's in, locked up in our foods, locked up in the foods that we're eating. This is why people lose weight and have appetite, uh, reduced appetite when they start the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, when they start on a micronutrient supplement program. This is one of Dr. Wallach's brilliant insights, is he realized that the lack of micronutrients which, which begins, by the way, at the level of the soil, is responsible for our disease states, not getting the vitamins and not getting the minerals that are supposed to be, are supposed to be in the food. And then we got to learn how to access pleasure chemistry in more healthy ways. To put an end to endless eating, we got to learn how to access our own pleasure chemistry willfully, volitionally, internally. Access pleasure chemistry without having something from the outside cause it. The brain, uh, the most important brain chemical that's associated with pleasure is the reward neurotransmitter known as dopamine. Dopamine is our, we just won the lottery neurotransmitter. When dopamine spikes, we feel like we just won a million dollars. It's our yippee hormone. It makes the brain say, whoa, all is right, all is great, what a wonderful world. And one of the fastest ways to increase the activity of dopamine is to eat calories, especially high calories in energy-dense foods, like desserts. Desserts will spike your dopamine. Coca-Cola will spike your dopamine. Candy bars will spike your dopamine. We are eating to spike our dopamine. But there's other ways to spike dopamine. There's other ways to hit the dopamine button to make the brain go yippee. Finishing a project upregulates your dopamine levels. When we complete a goal, we get a hit of dopamine. You know how you feel really good when you do something that's been sitting around for a while? You clean your kitchen finally or the garage, you write that paper or that book or whatever it is that you do, you finally finish it, it feels really good. That's dopamine. That's why writing down your goals can be so helpful. It's all about dopamine and brain chemicals. All right, we'll finish up about dopamine when we come back from our break on Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. Back on the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, the longevity business, our true skin health products, formulations, ingredients, or if you just uh, want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. A couple of cool stories here from the uh, Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Timing meals later at night can cause weight gain and impair fat metabolism. New findings suggest eating late at night could be more dangerous than you think compared to eating earlier in the day. Prolonged, delayed eating, that means eating later in the day or eating at night, can increase weight, insulin, and cholesterol levels and negatively affect Fat metabolism, one of the greatest ways, one of the easiest ways to lose weight and to leverage the power of ketones, of ketone bodies, is to stop eating at 4 or 5 o'clock and don't start eating again until 11 or 12 the next day. Yes, skip breakfast. 
skip dinner and skip breakfast. Just give yourself a little five or six uh, hour window of eating. Say eat between 11 o'clock in the morning and four or five o'clock in the afternoon and then stop eating. You can eat for six hours a day and then 18 hours a day you don't eat. It's a great way to help leverage the power of ketones and according to this article anyway, it's a great way to lose weight and improve your insulin and cholesterol levels and it just demonstrates how much power we have over our metabolism. The nonsense, the utter intellectual and biochemical and scientific bankruptcy of using drugs to control your insulin, insulin levels or to control your weight or to control your cholesterol levels is just staggeringly stupid. We have access over our biochemistry in a clean way, in a non-toxic way, in a way that will allow us to access our health or to leverage our health, our body's, our body's inherent ability to stay healthy without doctors, without drugs, without waiting in line at the pharmacy, without filling out forms. We have access over our biochemistry through our lifestyle choices. And something as simple as timing your meals more effectively can create dramatic changes in your metabolism, specifically around heart health and blood sugar health. All right, from the journal, uh, where is this from here? This is from The Conversation, website The Conversation. Uh, according to the European Federation of Allergy and Airway Patients, around 65% of children are affected by 18 months of age. And this has more to do with what's happening after we're born than it has, to, or has less to do with, with, that, with what's happening after we're born than it does with what's happening before we're born. And that means mothers have a major role to play in how their, how their babies will be affected in terms of allergies. Allergies start before we're born based on what moms are eating, based on what, how moms are thinking based on the nutritional status of moms. All of this means that if you're pregnant, it is extra important to make sure you're on a supplement program and your prenatal vitamins aren't going to cut it. Your stress levels are important. Ingesting foods that uh, amplify the stress response can have a negative impact on babies when it comes to their allergies. And when we're talking about allergies, we're not just talking about seasonal allergies, although, yes, that plays a major role. One of the most important things moms can do is to support their intestinal health because of the connection between the immune system and good bacteria in the gut, not just for mom, but also for babies. Reducing sugar intake is also going to be helpful. Staying away from foods that, that uh, cause digestive distress, and by the way, psychological stressors can also have an impact on baby's immune system before baby is born as well. And speaking of stress, this is from the journal PLOS One, Public Library of Science One. Internet withdrawal increases heart rate and blood pressure. A study that involved 144 participants had their uh, blood, uh, heart rate and blood pressure measured before and after a brief internet session. Their anxiety and self-reported internet addiction were also assessed. Results showed increased in psychological, uh, physiological, physiological arousal on terminating the internet session that showed up as increases in heart rate and blood pressure, as well as increased feelings of anxiety. What this tells me is that heart rate and blood pressure are linked to stress, the stress response. It also tells us that the difficulty people have at quitting addictions and dealing with withdrawal symptoms is really a function of cortisol and the stress response system. That's why I always say if you're trying to wean yourself off of drugs, if you're trying to wean yourself off of medication, relax the body. Do everything you could do to relax the body. If you're addicted to pain pills and you have to get off of them, it's a must that you get off of them, or cigarettes, and you have to quit, or whatever it is that you're addicted to, learn to take advantage of the body's relaxation response. Muscle relaxation, massage, yoga, hot water, hot baths. If I was trying to quit pain pills, I would be staying in the bathtub. I wouldn't be getting out of it. If you're trying to quit something, if you're trying to uh, withdraw off of something you're addicted to, and by the way, that includes sugar, be kind to yourself. Be loving to the body. Reduce cortisol levels. Slow, deep breathing is a wonderful way to reduce cortisol levels. And by the way, that's not just true if you're trying to wean yourself off of a medication or sugar or trying to quit smoking. It's also true if you're just trying to lower your blood pressure, if you're just trying to reduce the markers of elevated cortisol, if you're just trying to get healthier. Learning to access the stress, uh, the relaxation response, learning to reduce the stress response is, an, uh, along with eating behavior, probably the single most important, the, one of the two most important things you could do to stay healthy. Whether you're dealing with a, a chronic illness or not, especially if you're dealing with a chronic long-term health challenge. 
Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Georgia and welcome Don to the bright side. Good morning, Don. How you doing? Good. Excuse good. Me. How you doing, Ben? Good morning, Donald. So, God Don? bless you. Good morning, Don. Yep. Can you hear me there? Don? Hello? Where Don is. Going once, going twice. Yeah, Ben? All right, put Don back on hold here, and we'll go to Irene in California. Good morning, Irene. Hi, good morning. Um... I have or kind of had the whole adrenal fatigue thing, and you helped me get over that. And okay. then I kind of... What would you do, by the way, before you go on there? Um, you... I did zinc, and um, I'm not sure if I did copper, but I did zinc, oh, and selenium, and nice. breathing, and I can't remember what else you told me. What, what did you do? What, did I talk to you on the radio or on the phone? Oh, on this, this show. Oh, the show. And yeah. then what did you, what did you do? Uh, tell me how you dealt with, how you did the breathing. What was your strategy for breathing techniques? I would just slow down and just nice. start breathing slowly and, nice. you know, all that. And you notice so. the difference? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. I mean, it took about six months. I think the main thing was the nutrition. Well, good for you. That's awesome. Season. Yeah. So and I did tang- tangerine and all that. So good deal. So you changed yeah. your life. I did. That's wonderful. So how can we okay. help you today? So well, I so I got a little lazy, and so I um, I reordered selenium and zinc. I went to the store and got zinc picolinate. Okay. And then I also got uh, chelated copper. Good. Right. Zinc well, and copper go together. Co- when you take more zinc, you're going to lose more copper. So you always right. want to take the take them together. Okay. Well, I read a couple weeks a week ago or something that if you have adrenal, then you, sometimes you can't digest copper. When I take these pills, I get a stomach ache. Uh, you might want to, the copper you're talking about or yeah. the zinc. Yeah. You might want to uh, switch the type of copper that you're using. That's number one. Okay. Now, if you're not utilizing copper, that's more about the liver than it is about the adrenal glands. Copper, as important as it is, does require a certain protein to be produced in the liver in order for your body to access in order to take it for your body to take advantage of that copper. So a couple of things that you might want to consider, and they involve the liver. Uh, we got to take a break. Can you hang on for us, Irene? Yeah. All right, we'll take a commercial break. We'll finish up with uh, copper and bound copper is what it's called. We'll talk about bound copper in the liver. When we come back from our break, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will re- we'll return with more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. Ben 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Irene in California. Are you there, Irene? Yep. Okay, so here's the deal with copper. Super important mineral. It helps balance out zinc. It's involved in uh, production of collagen. A whole bunch of enzymes depend on, uh, depend on sufficient intake of copper. Most people will get enough copper from food, but it's not a bad idea to supplement, particularly if you're uh, if you're using zinc, but uh, you got to make sure your liver is working correctly. Now, if you got sick, if you got an upset stomach from copper, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're having an absorption problem. Uh, you might want to take your copper with food and see if that makes a difference. However, do. Yeah. you do take it with food and you still get an upset stomach? Yep. Okay. Well, I, I don't know necessarily that that would indicate that you're not utilizing the copper. Uh, although you may want to fun- f- uh, focus on the liver. In order okay. for copper to be taken advantage of, in order for the uh, copper to really be used for the, um, for the production of, uh, of, or for the activation of enzymes and the production of collagen, et cetera, uh, you have to make sure that your liver is working correctly. Copper is very dangerous stuff in a way. So is iron, by the way. Sometimes minerals uh, can be uh, uh, can, uh, induce oxidation, induce aging. And so the body has to handle these things really, really closely and, and carefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a protein that's made in the liver. It's called uh, cer- cer- ceruloplasmin. You don't have to necessarily remember that, but it's a, a compound that is responsible for how the body utilizes copper, how it excretes copper. And without uh, this, um, this, this protein that binds copper and allows it to be used, you're not going to be able to take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. A liver disease is extremely common. You, don't, you might not even know that you have liver disease. 100 million Americans have what's known as NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you're drinking alcohol, it's even, it's even more likely that you're going to have a liver problem. But even if you're not, most of us are going to have a liver problem just because of the way we eat in this country. So mm-hmm. focusing on liver health is incredibly, incredibly important. 
doing things like reducing your sugar intake and using the B complex and making sure you're getting enough essential fatty acids, making sure uh, that your uh, that your intestines are working correctly. There's a major relationship between intestinal health and liver health. Using probiotics, making sure that you're getting enough fiber. These are, are, are major strategies for helping protect the liver. Our Bergamax, by the way, which is on uh, brightsidehealth.com, is very helpful for folks dealing with liver problems. And again, you're not going to necessarily know that you have liver issues. Uh, it may just be something like uh, you're not uh, feeling so well, or you're not handling your sugar as effectively, or you've got chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue issues. Mm -hmm. The last thing that you might want to consider is using foods that contain high amounts of copper rather than supplementing with copper, things like High-protein foods like meats would tend to have a lot of copper. Shellfish has copper in it. Legumes have copper in them. Uh, have copper in them. Um, chocolate is a source of co uh, copper. Coffee is a source of copper as well. So making sure that you're using foods that contain copper may help you may help your body bypass some of the difficulties that you're having uh, with the upset stomach when you use copper supplements. When you take a supplement, you're getting a big hit of copper. If you get your copper from foods, it's a little more subtle. Mm -hmm. it's, a little, it's a little easier for your body to handle. It may also be a little bit uh, easier for, uh, to, to wake up the liver uh, to produce these binding proteins so that your body can use the copper. Okay. And then the last thing you might want to do is, is try a different brand of copper or a different type of copper. If it's chelated with glycine, you may, you may want to try uh, colloidal copper. You may want to try a different form of chelated copper. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Irene. Good to talk to you. All right. Let's go to Don now in Georgia who has returned. What's going on, Don? Good morning. Am I there? You hey, are Don? here now. How you doing, buddy? Okay. Good, good. Back to the liver since we're on it. Okay. Um, experiencing a little bit of uh, discomfort in my right side, upper back, in the back, and I'm okay. thinking it might be liver, gallbladder situation. Okay, it could and be. I'm, That's right. I'm wondering if there's something I should remove from the Well, diet. is it happening after you eat? Are you noticing that it happens after you eat? Um, no, you know, I noticed it in the morning mostly, and then once I defecate, it kind of subsided a bit. Okay, yeah, sounds like sounds like you're clogged up in there. I don't know necessarily that it would be your liver. It sounds like it more like it's an intestinal issue, especially after you have a if you if you feel relief after you have a bowel movement. A couple things that you might want to try. Are you doing it? What's your source of fiber? Source of fiber mainly, you know, vegetables mainly. Are you, are you eating a lot of it? Why don't you do this? Uh, how, how, first of all, how regular are you? Are you finding you regular every morning? Oh, yeah. I'm two, three times a day. Okay, good. I, what I would be doing, I would be working on the intestine first. I would be okay. doing a, I'd be doing a source of fiber along with probiotics or even better, fermented vegetables. Fermented vegetables will get you the good bacteria and the fiber. That's a, cup, that's a, okay. a, that's a, a good intestinal strategy. It sounds more like you're having an intestinal problem. I would say that you had, if you had uh, the discomfort an hour after eating or you know, a half hour to two hours somewhere in there after eating, I would say it would be more of a liver or a, uh, or a gallbladder issue. The fact that it's happening in the morning tells me the stuff, and it's, you find relief after you have a bowel movement, tells me it's more like stuff is backed up a little bit or stuff, something's not, uh, is not moving along as it should in, at the level of the intestine. So that's where you want to be okay. focusing on at least first. Use cartilage-containing products. That can help. Uh, things like bone soup, glucosamine, even cartilage capsules or cartilage supplements, that may help you. And then uh, a good probiotic supplement, as I mentioned, you might want to try the Fucoid Z from Longevity along with the Ultimate Nightly Essence. And then the way I like, the, the best way I found to get fiber, this is how I do it, is I grind up flax seeds and chia seeds every day. I use some turmeric, put some turmeric in there and some spices, and then just put it in water, stir it up, and drink it down. If you do that once a day, see if that makes a difference. And do probiotics while you're doing that. Focus on the intestinal health. Last thing you might want to try is uh, liquid nutrition, uh, things like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and also uh, soups, aloe vera gel, noni juice, anything that will uh, provide you nutrition in a liquid fashion. And also, if you do the aloe and the noni and the bone soup, for that matter, that will all provide intestinal benefits for you as well. Let me know how that works for you, Don, okay? Gotcha. Thanks. Hi, buddy. Take care. Thanks for your call. All Appreciate right. it. Okay, let's go to Jim in Colorado. Good morning, Jim. How you doing, my man? Jim? Good morning. Good morning, Jim. Hey, I'm uh, your PRP case. Oh, guy. Jim. And, uh, Jim, I'm how's your skin having... doing? How's your skin? No, it's actually getting worse. I'm getting a lot of this, uh, this what they call elephant skin wrinkling. That's nah, not good, buddy. Now, did you do all the food stuff? Uh... 
Yeah, I did a fast, and then I I did a, what I think is elimination diet, and I, what'd you uh, find? I, I really couldn't tell any. Nah, we didn't do it right. Difference. We didn't do it right. Listen, Jim, you need a little bit more hand holding. I, I got to work with you personally. Can you give me a call or send me an email? Sure. Okay, you want to do that? I can't. I get, I can't do this on the radio. We only have about a minute here, but I want to help you I out. Understand. Okay. Okay, okay, so give, thank you. Uh, give me a sh- thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. All right, got about a minute okay. left. Let's talk to Truth Raider. You get the last word, Carl. What's up, my man? Congratulations, Ben, for graduating from Syracuse University. My dad thank graduated that from was, Cornell University. That was 40 years ago, though. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. My dad uh, graduated from Cornell, did his internship, and then worked, co- worked across the eastern seaboard all the way down to Tennessee. Then he wound up in California. What in did he do? Well, what he did was he was a doctor at many levels until he got to the highest level, being a psychiatrist. Okay. He was an MD, in other words? Yes, he did. Very nice. doctor. And yeah. in 1991, they chopped his balls off for having prostate cancer, and he died within a year. They so castrated him? That, Literally, that, they castrated him? Yes. Yes. Wow. In, in, in proper, improper procedures. And uh, that's just the medical model that he totally believed in. He totally believed in the, the medicines and so on and so forth. I'm getting similar type of uh, symptoms as, as far as what I'm getting in condition. is like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a, 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 a penile contraction type of sensation. Uh, hmm. type of internal I don't think that's the prostate. No, that doesn't sound like a prostate issue. What do you mean by contraction? Well, it's like, when you, say, for example, if you urinate, yeah. And when you're completing urination, you you have that little contraction when you're uh-huh, yeah, I know what you're talking you talking about. have a little contraction feeling. I'm feeling those involuntarily without uh-huh. needing to go to the bathroom. And like I a spasm? Of, like a spasm? Yeah, like a yeah, contraction feeling like I'm, I'm having right. to pee, but I don't have to pee. All right, but, couple and things. then I have a sensation. On, I had one or two occasions where I had to urinate, and I couldn't urinate. Mm. I had nothing to urinate. Yeah, that's that could be now that could be a prostate issue if you feel like you have to go to the bathroom. Or, do you go a lot in the middle of the night? No, no. It's just the first time or for a couple of a couple of uh, incidents of this happening I, over I've, the past few days. I would be guessing that it has something to do more with spasms and spasm. You know, there's muscles in there, so uh, the control uh, the flow of urine and control the movement of fluids through the bladder and and, and the urethra and, and the ure- ureters. In that yeah. whole area. So what I'd be doing is I'd be working with, whenever you have spasm issues, you want to work with electrolytes and the B-complex. Now, the B-complex and electrolytes, it's very common that you could be deficient in these things because they come out in your urine. And if you're not replacing them throughout the day, and it's very important to replace them uh, all day long, not just once a day or twice a day, but all day long, using things like the B-complex and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and uh, also electrolytes and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and vegetable juices. Between BTT, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and lots and lots of vegetable juices, and also you can squeeze lemon in water too now that's another way to get your electrolytes that's where i'd be focusing on not just spasms not just penile spasms the spasms anywhere in the body uh, yeah. electrolytes and the b-complex that's the way to go all right hey i gotta go carl thanks yep. so much for call appreciate it have a beautiful day buddy and i hope we helped you out hope we helped all our listeners out today on the bright side i'm pharmacist ben thanks for listening have an awesome wonderful beautiful spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now